zoo animals uh, are important in our day-to-day -day life. Um, not only that, uh, not only zoo animals, but wildlife as such, so that people appreciate uh, wild a bit more. Huh? So anyhow, we've got to exhibit. Then the other is the ability to service the animals, which is feed, water, and clean out. Manipulate the animals, which is capture, restraining, separating them, isolating them, or load onto a suitable transport. Now, veterinary management comes, which includes off-limit access and observation points. Then we've got occupational health and safety standards for the staff. Legislative requirements, including appropriate security and quarantine facilities. Conservation objectives, including manipulation of animals for breeding. Then incorporating all these animal management requirements in our exhibit design will include suitable off-limits area with facilities for separating, isolating, and maintaining individuals or small groups. Capture and restraint facilities, appropriate feeding strategies and equipments, appropriate management and protection of the plant and built environment. Facilities and strategies for managing and manipulating and breeding. The way its animals are displayed is the primary way that people and the community perceive a zoo. Indeed, it, it could well be said that the reputation and popularity of a zoo depends largely on a public perception, which is founded on its animal display. The zoo may be doing a great work in breeding and releasing endangered species, but if visitors don't like the exhibit, then its whole existence may be in jeopardy. Now, these are uh, what I just mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. <laughs> uh. Where is it now? Oh. Anyhow, well, I'll just keep on talking, huh? Uh, the, the, you'll be seeing, seeing the uh, the PDF anyhow later, which is uh, which is uh, good at the same time. I'll just put another one. Mm. Now, uh, those who are uh, here on a, on a phone, it may be a bit hard because I just don't want to uh, put the whole thing. But if you Google search on uh, zoo enclosures, hmm, you'll find that there are different, different kinds of enclosures which are made depending on the economy of a country or uh, whoever is privatizing that zoo. Or let's say um, there are many conservative people and in some countries private zoos are also allowed uh, in india also it is very much allowed especially if you go down south to kerala you'll find uh, many um, private zoos which are having uh, things like snakes uh, certain monkeys and things like that uh, something which uh, a, a state is very fond of uh, even in aizol there is uh, one guy but I don't think he has it anymore. He used to have a python as well as a, a, a wild cat with him. And I still remember, when was it? Somewhere in the year 2004 or 2005, he had brought his wild cat for uh, rabies uh, mm, uh, the, mm, vaccination. It was at Katla. And there was a whole line of people waiting for that vaccination on the road. Because you know all of them could not come. It was a free, a free vaccination camp, and he brought his cat along. Now that cat is huge, and when the cat came, it was wagging its tail, and the tail also was lovely. You know, like fully blown big wild cat tail, and all the dogs were scared of him. Hmm. And I still have that vision in my head. 
Uh, now, what I mean to say is eventually that all these enclosures, there are certain laws where you are required. But the main concept or the main reason of uh, holding a zoo, like I said, it is not only for uh, what you call for public enjoyment as an entertainment, but it also forms a form of research. It also forms a place of breeding, especially tigers. Uh, during my internship, uh, I did my BVSC from uh, 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 Maharashtra. So in our internship, we had to go to a zoo at Aurangabad. <clears throat> and they had tigers, and they also had uh, a tigers, uh, uh, what do you call, a breeding uh, enclosure. And they were doing pretty well. So such are the things. So uh, when you come to enclosures, you can, you can, you know, uh, all the notes and when you simply look into Google as zoo enclosures, you'll find all the, all the pictures justify what we are studying. Okay. Anyhow, then I'll keep on uh, going with this. So the way its animals are displayed in the primary way, Okay, no, uh, the existence is done. So, animal display requirement for any modern zoo exhibit will include appropriate public access to the exhibit, exhibitory, the ability of the public to actually see the animal. And this may sound obvious, but for some nocturnal or burrowing or well camouflaged species, it can prove difficult. We, we need safety precautions to protect and pre prevent public access to the animals. Graphic and interpretative information, educational opportunities, both formal and informal. Now, when we come to that, I'll just show you, I'll just enlarge one of the pictures. Uh, now, if you look at the enlarged picture out here, you find that uh, this is an outer protection for people, for the ones who are coming to see the enclosure or the zoo. Now, certain kind of habitat also has to be provided to the animal. And for that, uh, in order to uh, avoid the animal or the animals to come out of the enclosure, uh, for example, this very institution has nettings. Now, I, I very much presume that these will be uh, steel nettings. And around this area, we'll find that there is a, a water logging, uh, what you call depth, made within this enclosure so that they do not come out. Okay. And we'll have a small holding for them so that they can sleep at night or, you know, when they don't feel like coming out. Certain freedom is also given to them. Okay. Modern zoo exhibits, it need to incorporate two primary objectives. One, appropriate public access to the viewing of the animal. The public must be interested and satisfied. The display and educational objective of the zoo such that what is zoo aiming to do with its animal? What is its message? Now, achieving this display requires and its objective may end up compromising some of the management requirement for instance, providing large naturalistic exhibit full of vegetation, rocks and water features might look great for the visitors, but may also make it more difficult for the keeping staff to access, to access all part of the exhibit and observe, service and capture any of the animals. I'll just show another uh, example for it. Uh, Now, if you look into this enclosure provided for the elephant, you can, you can find that some kind of a, a natural habitat situation is provided with the rocks and the flowing water out here, a place where the animals can dip themselves. And obviously outside of it will be the enclosure, uh, just like I had showed in the previous picture. It will be uh, guarded. Now, at the far end, you can find 
that they have a place for their either you know whatever activity they want they want to sleep or they want to be fed so this most most probably is the feeding day so things like that uh, there's another uh, clear photograph i want to show you again okay this a good one here now uh, is it is it very small are you watching listening on your phone or your laptop or things like that na okay okay good 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 i hope it is not too small uh, but if you look at this uh, enlarged uh, picture you can find like this is most probably for a, a bear or for a, a, a nocturnal kind of an animal or either uh, mm, let's say uh, the one which in its natural habitat lives in a cave okay uh, how uh, how many of you can tell me the kind of animals whose habitat requires living in a cave okay lovely any uh, uh, any other even in our gym even in our gym corbett park uh in its natural habitat we'll find some of the tigers live inside caves okay all old, old caves uh i don't know if you have seen the movie uh the tiger movie uh i don't know what, what was the name of it was it called brothers or something in which also uh two tiger cubs were filmed because her mother had somehow uh banished and you know they were surviving on their own so this film director he just watched them grow and a documentary and a movie was also made accordingly so in that you can find that its habitat has also been included for the zoo enclosure now when it comes to certain research activity it is a bit difficult okay for example if you see the back of this thing it may not necessarily be uh what do you call an enclosure for the animal within this picture i'll just show you another one for example in this one if you look at it now this is a, a made design but the kind of animals that could be put inside are quite kind of very very varied okay now this apparently is a prototype in russia so it is going to be very uh, very uh, different also but at the same time this enclosure if you look at the top of it the most probably the animals will be here at the bottom even their uh, 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 their caves or their main dwelling or resting place will be inside it but the top will most probably be for the staff ha huh? for the staff to uh, uh, do all the necessary work whether it's for no, in the form of veterinary care or in the form of uh, feeding them uh, uh the simple management or even for breeding purpose okay okay now we come to the enclosure design there are three main groups to think about when designing enclosures which are animals the keepers and public for the animals how big are they are they group living or solitary are they sedentary animals or very very active sedentary in the sense you know uh, uh they don't move around too much uh, they're not as active as certain monkeys for example we can say uh, no uh, even the um, uh what we can say let's say even porcupine for example ha huh? uh then what wild habitat do they come from we have to think about its natural uh, temperature humidity environment do they climb or hide underground do they need a flat area or a 3 3d structure if they climb is mesh or bars better how far do they like to be able to see for example cheetahs are long sighted and have high points with long views 
While some animals are very short-sighted, are the enclosures interesting? Do the animals need toys to play with? Are they nocturnal? Can you mix them with other animals? The animals need privacy, perhaps separate dens of public show. How big an area does the animal need? For example, wild uh, ring-tailed lemurs may spend their entire lives within 200 meters of where they were born. If that area provides them with all the need, a carnivorous territory will increase as food becomes scarcer. Compare the Sumatran tigers, small territory in the wild with the vast ranges patrolled by Siberian tigers or polar bears. Animals will usually only move to find food, escape danger, or find mates. Now I'll just show you another picture of it. Um, for example, this one. Now in this picture, when we see these tigers, they need a certain area, okay? They need to wander. They can't stay at one place all the time. So when you see, uh, well, now this very picture will reflect that either the zoo is also very rich because there's, these, these are all uh, what you call uh, non-corrosive metal used. So even in rains, it will not rust. So uh, uh, either the establishment uh, has been well-funded or they really look after tigers and its breeding. Okay, so all these things are required to understand as well as uh, we will, you know, when we were younger, uh, most probably we would have, we might have been taken to zoos, some of us. Okay, now, there are, uh, yeah, now we can justify how or why many of their uh, cages or their displays were made according to the natural habitat of the animal enclosed. Okay, there are, these are all the reasons for it. I'll keep on going. Okay, for, for the keepers now. It was, we mentioned it for the animals first. Now for the keepers. We need to feed, the keepers need to feed the animals with the correct food and provide them with fresh water without the animals escaping. Usually without going into the enclosure with the animals. Some animals are dangerous and keepers Never go in with them. Others allow varying degrees of interaction with keeping staff. Enclosures must be easy to keep clean to minimize chances of diseases. Animals may need to be isolated for moving to other collection or for veterinary purposes, sometimes from a distance with an anesthetic dart or sometimes while taking unsedated. An animal is a tunnel of the monkey. For example, a tunnels of monkey enclosures a section of which can be stopped by dropping doors at either end so that the monkey can be isolated and moved without being manhandled or sedated. I'll just show you another example for such. Um, uh, just hold on. Um, okay, let's, uh, we'll come to... Uh, Okay, I'll just give a small example of this. Now, if you see this this uh, this picture, it may not be very big, but it's actually a bear in a zoo enclosure. Now, if you see that there's a tiny space in between out here, and at the back, there is entrance for the animal to come and move out. Now, this back enclosure, which has this green wall, inside there will also be a different cage when, whereby, when these animals go inside, the animal keepers inside this building will have an area to feed them. Okay, uh, there's a, another photo here. I'll just show you again. Oh, oh, it is quite small. Uh, wait, let me find a bigger one. Now, as you see out here, this enclosure is whereby when the animal is put inside its cage, okay, they will know that it is feeding time. Now, this enclosure is a bit old. Uh, uh, it is not very scientific anymore. 
uh, there are other pictures also that can be shown, which I'll uh, most probably show you a bit later. Now, these cages, as you can see, when it is feeding time, uh, they will know. The animals know by themselves if they have been staying for a few days or months. And some of them usually are pre-trained during feeding time. Okay, So when they are told, okay, it is feeding time, they'll ring a bell or they'll shout. And they usually know the keeper's voice or the keeper's voices. So they will go in. The doors will be automatically locked, though. No human will actually lock it like this, okay? No keeper, no zookeeper can be very confident as to, uh, especially when it comes to carnivores, no animal keeper will be very sure that the, that the animal itself will be friendly always, okay? Whether it is feeding time or not. So they, their nature, wild animals per se, their nature is wild. Okay, they are very uncertain. That is why all these gates will be automatically locked. But once inside, their feeding is given. For example, if uh, you need to anesthetize the animal, for, for example, for breathing, uh, for AI, for uh, semen collection, they have to be anesthetized. So once they are put inside such cages, not in the whole enclosure, okay? It is very dangerous for a zookeeper to shoot or to anesthetize an animal from the enclosure itself. So animals like these, for most of the carnivores, they are put inside a cell like this. Then they're uh, shot using an anesthetic gun or things like that. Huh? And they are fed here also. Okay, then for the public, most of the animals must therefore be visible, okay? The public often likes to see naturalistic enclosures. However, these may be totally impractical. For example, herbivores will quickly destroy most living plants in their enclosures, so their paddock often look more very bare. Naturalistic enclosures, however, are often more pleasing to the public and may be better educationally to illustrate the correct habitat. Should the animals be visible all the time? Many animals don't stop to look carefully or to watch but hurry past if they cannot see the animal immediately. Perception of freedom. Do the public like the use of island, moats, bars, wire mesh, glass to separate them from the animals? Information for the visitors about the animal, their habitat, and where is the information placed? Now I'll just look into another picture which illustrates it a bit more. Now, if we see this very picture, you can see that the enclosure has been given abundantly. Now, why are all these things required? Uh, even in India, we have certain laws where every state is supposed to have a zoo in order to, uh, uh, what do you call, show uh, its environmental concern it is educational and things like that. But as years have passed by, many zoos have backed down or have been closed. For one thing, uh, people have not been able to appreciate it a bit too much nowadays unless enclosures are made beautifully huh? or unless public see that the animals are enclosed in such a way where they, where they can... Uh, kind of get certain knowledge of its natural habitat. And uh, as we know that many of the kids and parents nowadays, especially after the 1980s, are very much, uh, what do you call, they very much know and understand what a zoo should be like. They want the animals to be treated well huh? from the public's point of view because many of these zoos uh, require management, as we all know, and it also requires funds. Uh, majority of them, now each state government cannot, uh, what do you call, run a zoo properly nowadays. So it totally depends on public funds. Public funds in the form of people or children visiting the zoo every on a on a day-to-day -day basis, or uh, you know tourists coming in. For example, in Assam we have the Kaziranga, 
uh, in Kaziranga, as we know, uh, even uh, mm. uh, timings are given, right? It is totally a wild. Now, it is not a zoo. It is simply a, a place where, uh, no, it is actually called a park, right? Kaziranga. So it is in its natural habitat. But when we go, we have to wake up early in the morning so that we can go over there and we have uh, elephants that can take us for the rounds. Huh. So when the elephants take us for the rounds, we can see the rhinoceros and things like that. So those are its natural environment and it's only as a park. Now, when it comes to a zoo, uh, there are certain zoos which are providing, uh, what do you call, uh, elephants and sometimes even camels where you can have a joy ride. And, you know, that uh, kind of uh, pleases the children as well. And there is some public participation towards it. Now, all such things are required in maintaining or running a zoo hmm, or a private park or a national park. Now, those are the concepts behind it, and that is what we are studying today. I'll just keep on going. I'm sorry it is a bit boring with uh, me not having the slides and not having to put the PDF uh, all the time. But like I said, it, it will not take long. Now, the other considerations are the building materials. The building material should be non-toxic. It should withstand wear and tear. Like I said before, uh, when I showed the picture of the tiger or on that rail, it should be easy to clean. It should be easy to clean using some, uh, you know, uh, water hose or uh, it should be easy and manageable by the staff also. Strong and safe enough to, to keep very powerful, dangerous animals in. Ec ecological soundness of material. Now, environmental enrichment. Toys, scatter feeding to encourage foraging, feeding at unpredictable times of the day or even unpredictable days. Feeding in no novel ways. Making the animal work for their food, allowing animals out in the zoo grounds to interact with the public or even give rights, like I said uh, a, a moment ago. Cost, zoos are not made of money and all enclosures have to be compromised by the space available and the cost of the whole budget. Also, planning permission, having enclosures which are listed buildings, housing the animal whilst the enclosures are modified, etc., etc., etc. Parts of animal enclosure. An animal exhibit has a foreground, a middle ground, and a rear ground. The barriers in the foreground and the rear ground should be invisible. The barriers on the side of the middle ground should also be invisible. Huh. These are part of the animal enclosure, not the exhibit. Okay. The foreground. The foreground is where the viewer stands on a path where the front barrier is located. Vegetation and natural features like rocks and fallen trees should be the same as the viewer's side and the animal exhibit to create landscape immersion or visual integration. The front barrier should be invisible, preferably a moat or a sheet of glass. In a moat, careful attention should be given to the sight lines. Okay, foreground. Let, uh, let me give an example of the foreground. Now, if we see on this, this part becomes the foreground, right? But the animal which is inside is the uh, either the a water uh, requiring animal, for example, like crocodiles or hippos or even uh, some uh, rhinos. Okay, so their enclosures, like we said, now this part may not be totally visible for people. It will be for the zookeepers. But this part is where we call as the front. Okay. Uh, now, these all such things we are saying is only because to, to be able to, uh, for example, if any of one is given a contract after you pass out, if some rich man from your town or your city, he asks you, okay, let us build a zoo, then you will have such idea. That is the main reason behind it. Okay. The middle ground. The middle ground is where the animal will actually be displayed for the viewer. This is where necessary features of its ecological niche, both functional and aesthetic, are located. 
there should be pools rock features trees vegetation grass areas patches mud wallows salt licks although the animal should be offered security and comfort away from the viewer the ultimate challenge for the designer is to ensure that animals are on display any time a viewer wishes to see them preferably the side barrier should be invisible Moats can be used or heavily planting should be considered behind and through fences. Rear ground. The rear ground addresses the animal, the, the rear barrier and the feeling of depth of the exhibit. An ideal exhibit should have on invisible moat as a rear barrier and planting beyond the moat to give the feeling of depth and space of the, of the scene. If a fence is used, it should be heavily planted in the front and behind to conceal it. remember it is an illusion that we are creating okay now i'll just look at illusion for the okay this seems like a very good example now in this picture this is for a snow leopard now the kind of enclosure they have provided ha huh? you can see and this is the rear now believe me this is this is also a zoo okay but the management has considered public viewing as its main source of income or uh you know just to make a name name for it you know uh, even uh, among zoo keepers all over all over the world uh these are certain competitions they are looking into nowadays okay uh i think uh, there should be a picture of um zoo in dubai now that is you know humongously beautiful also uh okay anyhow qualities of good barriers should be safety and security of animals in display that of visitors and that of keepers and other management staff preventing escape of animals ensuring proper visibility of animals facilities for day to day working merging and closure design with surroundings reducing stress to animals type of barriers should be moats steel vertical bars horizontal pipes glass hot wire stone walls panel wires all the moats now dry moats are preferred over wet moats as it reduces water requirement okay that's anyhow i know this this is getting a bit uh, yeah it's a half an hour left uh in this main subject there are plenty of uh, what do you call uh, short answer questions coming out of it okay so later please make sure that you understand from the notes the parts of animal enclosure the qualities of good barriers the type of barriers okay questions always come in in these patterns okay i will go uh, i will okay we have the type of barriers anyway dry moat which are one sided dry moat suitable for more flighty animals or where visibility of the moat is unavoidable alternatively the slope can be left as earth okay i'll just look for a example for dry moat now this is an example for using dry moats okay it only uh, allows uh, what do you call uh the plus points are it does not take too much of water it conserves water okay another example a bit more clearer would be this one using dry moat so that water can actually be collected into it or it should avoid certain evaporation of it one those are one sided dry moat now dry moat two sided
Now this is a two-sided dry moat. This part on our left and the one on the top. Now the inner vertical war acts to deter animals from getting into the moat. The depth and the width has to be proportioned to suit each species and its abilities. Now, wet moats, I will come to wet moats. Now, as you can see, these are the wet moats, which can obviously have more. Now, it all depends on uh, how we are trying to give to the public its, uh, 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 what do you call, information on its natural habitat or how it is found in the, uh, in the uh, what do you call, in nature by such. But all the precautions has to be taken within its, uh, um, what do you call, building its structure, okay? Now, this is in such a way that no animal can actually come up here or even if it comes to take bath, this will be a bit high. Huh? This part will be a bit high so that nobody or no animal can go inside or no even humans or children can climb over this wall and jump into, in, jump into the water hole. Then we've got the fence barriers. Now, these, this is a fence barrier, okay? Now, uh, we are, this will be in a different place, okay? This will most probably be in a park. It won't actually be in a zoo, uh, uh, how it is given, because behind the fence would be a large area where uh, they can probably be um, in their uh, natural free zone or their feeding is provided in such a way Sometimes in a natural uh, or a open uh, zoo or a um, open uh, exotic animal or endangered animal park, they allow, some zookeepers allow gaming. Gaming means uh, because of their natural eating uh, uh, process, these carnivores, they actually have to go and run for their feed. Now, that also helps them uh, get back their energy. Otherwise, if you keep on feeding them from one side and giving them, you know, uh, cut meat or things like that, it kind of uh, uh, depletes their um, health. Now, the fence is primarily used as a side or a near barrier. It is an efficient method of containment but can be damaged by animals, storms or falling trees. The footing depth should be one-third the fence height. A good anti-corrosion system is essential. Now we've got vertical fence barrier with return. Now, if you see from this picture, this vertical fence with return, why is this? So that neither of us can climb. Okay, we can see the animals through this barrier easily. But this re vertical return fence is provided so that even if it tries to climb up till here, huh, climbing this side on a return basis for the animal it slows them down. So it is a no-no for them. Okay. So there is always some engineering and architectural reasons for providing such uh, enclosures. Then we have got depressed vertical fence barrier. 
डिप्रेस्ड वर्टिकल Oh, the picture is very small again. Hold on. So, anyhow, this is a vertical depressed barrier. Okay, fencing barrier. Then we have got another one, which is known as a ha ha barrier. Okay. Oh, the picture is small again. Oh man! Anyhow, this ha ha uh, enclosure is uh, especially designed for animals like even the giraffe, where its feeding is also allowed. Like we had uh, heard in the, the, a while ago, uh, this is a, a kind of uh, a management from the zoo authorities that feeding time is also allowed by the public. Okay. Now uh, they give them uh, certain. Uh, as we go to zoos, we will find that uh, they are uh, what do you call? Uh, these animals are allowed certain things, and obviously, even for business purpose, they might even sell peanuts within the zoo, so that they can give uh, public can give to the uh, some of them. So this kind of barriers is known as a ha ha barrier. Then we've got cattle grid barrier. And reinforced pipe barriers, hot wiring. I will not mention all of them. Okay, uh, they are not so hard, but it is very important that you know all such things. And for example, if certain questions come, how many kind of barriers do we know, or uh, uh, in, in list out at least five barriers? So we know that we have got a fence barrier, we have got vertical fence barrier, depressed vertical fence barrier, ha ha barriers, and things like that. You know. Uh, uh, for uh, for the uh, uh, for the exams, so all these things, uh, as far as the names are given, a barrier we know that it is simply used for, uh, or the enclosure is designed in such that it becomes a barrier for the animal, as well as the public. Okay, that is all. So we've got the different kind of barriers, and whatever name it is given, it is given on a very en engineered and uh, logical meaning. So it, these are not hard per se. Okay. Now those were the last ones. Uh, okay, I'll just give you another example of it. This won't be long. We've got the other called as a piano barrier. Now, as you can see from the picture itself, this piano barrier is made in such a way that you are able to see the animal directly. Okay, there's hardly much fence involved in it, and it uh, it just allows you to focus on the animal and not the barrier. For example, there are certain, uh, like the previous picture which I showed you where, okay, uh, something which uh, is not very interesting to watch when we go to a zoo are barriers like these. 
Now, when you see such kind of a barrier, all your pictures, whatever picture you're going to take of the animal, majority of will be shielded by the uh, 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 this barrier kind of a thing. Huh? But in a piano, in a piano barrier, what we can see is that the animals are seen in their, the animals are seen as they are. So there is, uh, you know, being a camera person, uh, you, you are not, uh, there is nothing or uh, the picture you take becomes better. So it kind of, it is uh, like we said, we are trying to entertain people. We are trying to motivate people to come and visit zoos more. And if you can see, if this picture is clear to you, you will see that this is an American eagle. Okay. So uh, an eagle within its own environment and on a conservatory part, it is allowed. Uh, such enclosures are built so that, uh, uh, what do you call it? Management of a zoo becomes a bit easier. Huh. Okay. It's 11.50. I'm almost, I'm, I'm actually done. So what we'll do is, uh, I'll be uh, sending through WhatsApp uh, this very note to the main group, or shall I send it to uh, uh, CRs? What do you suggest? So I'll send it to the group. I think what? Group Hassan made all sums of Oh, group Hassan Karanti. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll be also sending the uh, the beginning of the week lecture also. Okay, there'll be two in in two different uh, uh, what do you call it? PDF forms, and I shall be giving certain questions later in the evening or tomorrow. Okay, for uh, for your exam, uh, I think they are only on. They should be on a basis of a tick mark or name name a few of them like that. Okay, uh, kind of objective questions. It won't be it won't be hard. So don't worry. So of all the things I've been saying in a very hurried manner and uh, showing certain pictures, uh, is there any question you want to ask me today? Are there any further questions you want to know about a zoo, its infrastructure, or its building, or its, uh, its uh, enclosure design? I hope you understand by now that uh, all these enclosures are for a reason and not all enclosures are, uh, are uh, uh, what do you call, are seen uh, within our country. But like I said, even zoo can be a good business, for especially for environmentalists. So uh, all such designs have been put up for many a good reasons. Uh, uh, we we have had many examples of a bad zoo design where children or even adults, out of their stupidity, if their hands go inside those barriers, they are feeding certain carnivores. And many times, uh, some carnivores have bit off that human's leg or arm, things like that. Huh? So those are bad designs. And as time evolves, even for those kind of zoos, you know, even the government can do nothing, but okay, they discard those kind of zoos also. They even uh, close them down. So as a veterinarian, when it comes to such uh, zoo keeping as our, uh, as our main topic, enclosure designs are very, very important. Not on a very, uh, not on, not only on a veterinarian point of view, but as a management concept. Okay, that is the, my main bottom line today. Okay, thank you, class. I'll send it. Uh, I'll send it to on our uh, uh, main uh, main WhatsApp group. Okay, the notes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. I think you're uh, you are having exams on the fifth, na? Yes, sir. You're having exams on fifth. Okay. So my next class, I think, is on the ninth. So I'll try to give all the questions either by, either by this evening or tomorrow. Okay. 
चलो हैव अ गुड डे थैंक यू सर 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर स्टे सेफ एंड एंजॉय यूरो हां